I've got the old Vectrex down off the shelf today and for the last couple of hours I've been playing quite a few games on it and the reason for that is because a couple of weeks ago a chap got in touch to ask if I'd be interested in having a look at his custom Vectrex screen overlays. Now if you're unfamiliar with the Vectrex it's an early 1980s games console that uniquely for a home device displays its graphics using vectors on a built-in CRT but because that display is monochrome to jazz those graphics up a bit when you bought a game in the box with the cartridge you'd also get a coloured screen overlay. Now over the years a lot of these have gone missing but of course if you're playing your games off something like a multi-cart then you won't have had the overlays in the first place which is where these come in. Inside this box are a number of different overlays, some that are generic and you can even get ones that are just for specific games. But as you can see, it's quite a thick box. It doesn't contain that many overlays. I think I've got five in here. The rest of the space is taken up with a frame which goes around the screen because the thing that's unique about these is that unlike the originals, these have been printed with UV ink and the frame contains the black light to illuminate that ink and it creates a rather mesmerizing effect. Let's have a look. Right, so I've turned the lights back up and I've turned the Vectrex off for the moment. You might have noticed it's a bit of a noisy one, this one, as far as the infamous Vectrex buzz goes. No doubt there's also, for some people, some CRT wine. But those are all part and parcel of the Vectrex experience. But that said, I am going to install a D-Buzz kit to reduce that buzz down in the future, but that's a job for another day. Today we're talking about this frame and the UV overlay. So I've got the frame on the machine at the moment. It's a little bit of an industrial looking thing. However, to see the UV effect, you have to turn the lights way down or perhaps even off for the best results. And then you don't even notice it's there. Now the frame on this one is attached to the front of my machine with Velcro. So it's quite easy just to take it off and go back to a pretty much stock looking Vectrex, although I have got Velcro pads on here now, which of course I'd have to peel off. If you didn't want to do that, you don't have to put Velcro on it at all. You've got holes either side here. You could hold it onto the machine with some elastic instead. Now the UV frame on the reverse here, you can see we've got the lights either side, which illuminate the overlay. This is powered from the corner. There's a barrel plug on here. In the case of mine, there's a dimmer switch on there, which is also an on-off switch as well. And on the other end of there, it's plugged into a 12 volt power supply, which of course is plugged into the wall. So that means this Vectrex is currently using two wall plugs. If you didn't want to do it that way, there's another version of this available where the light strips are powered from five volts and that five volt power supply comes straight from the Vectrex from the player to joystick port. So I'll just pop that back on the front there. Now the effects in these games I've been recording doesn't come across quite as well on camera as it does in person, as you'd imagine. And also something I've noticed on the video that I've shot so far, there's a bit of a kind of blue clouding effect visible towards the left hand side of the screen, which I don't see with my eyes. It's just something being picked up with a camera. It looks a little bit like light leakage. So try and discount that if you possibly can. Now, as far as swapping out these overlays go, it's just a matter of taking them off as you would with a normal Vectrex overlay. I've got a selection here to try out. So I'm going to go through these. I'll play a few games and we'll see what kind of effects these add to the experience. So let's have a look at it. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's great to see that as the Vectrex approaches its 40th birthday, there are still people out there trying new things out with it. And it really did put a smile on my face. The first time I saw some of the games that I've only ever experienced in black and white get an interesting colour effect and an unusual overlay. Now, not every UV overlay is suitable for every game. Some of them can actually make the games a little bit more confusing to play. However, there are quite a variety to choose from, so you should be able to find one that suits most of the games, and there are some that are just for a specific game. And that's the range that I'd like to see increase over time if there's enough interest, so that all the main Vectrex games would have their own custom UV overlay. If you are interested in finding out any more about this, there's some links in the video description. But I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this here today, and that is it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.